Alligators living in New York sewers has been one of the oldest urban legends in American history. The legend goes that in New York, a colony of alligators introduced by pet owners live in the sewers beneath. These alligators were discarded by their owners as hatchlings by being flushed down toilets. Over time, the alligators grew in numbers and became a stable population. Rumors suggest that these alligators are albino, mutated, and even giant. While this seems like a crazy story, there surprisingly is a lot of truth tied to these claims. The general idea of alligators living in sewers began sometime in the late 19th century, with one supposed example being an alligator living in Atlanta in 1873. Quote, it is said to flow at ease in the sewer running from the American Hotel down by the residence of Postmaster Denning. Later on in that century, claims of many alligators living in the sewers of a few states such as Georgia, Texas, and New Jersey began to spread. The most compelling evidence of an alligator actually being found in a sewer is from a story in the New York Times during 1907. In it, a few sewer workers found a strange object in the sewers. The superintendent of the Kearney Street Department, Charles Gids, picked up the object but soon dropped it when it bit his hand. Quote, workmen then examined the object, which proved to be a young alligator about 18 inches long. It had nipped Gids in the right hand but inflicted little injury. It was learned later that the alligator had escaped a week ago from freeholder John W. Roach, and who welcomed its return with many thanks. One of the stranger stories I found was supposedly the suggestion of alligators being used to clean New York's sewer pipes as it was done successfully in Florida. Quote, the idea is to start an alligator through the sewer head first. Being in a position a little too complicated to turn around, the animal will crawl until he reaches a manhole. A rope is to be tied around the alligator's body and as he moves, he will drag a scraper. A more notable story specifically for the New York legend was when some young boys found a nearly three foot alligator, later identified to be a crocodile, in the Bronx River. Quote, a 30 inch alligator inhabitant of Crestwood Lake in the Bronx River Parkway at Crestwood succumbed to the attack of two small boys this week. According to reports from the Parkway Police Headquarters in Bronxville, where the youths proudly delivered their prize. When the boys talked to police, they explained there were multiple alligators in the Bronx River. A police expedition occurred to catch the remaining reptiles, but none were found. It also appeared the crocodile they caught was just an escaped pet. Still, by this time, the notion of alligators living in sewers or New York was already something people were aware of. However, it would be an incredible encounter in 1935 when the legend of sewer gators would explode. In 1935 Harlem, teenagers were shoveling snow into a manhole. One of the teens, 16-year-old Salvatore Condolucci, saw something strange in the sewers. Quote, Suddenly there were signs of clogging 10 feet below, where the manhole drop merged with a dark conduit leading to the river. Salvatore yelled, Hey you guys, wait a minute, and got down on his knees to see what was the trouble. He soon realized what he saw was a decent-sized American alligator. The teens pulled the alligator out with a rope, and the gator ended up being about 7 to 8 feet long and 125 pounds. The alligator was obviously not handling the cold well, but was still showing signs of life. The alligator actually snapped its jaws at the boys, and the boys proceeded to beat the alligator to death with their shovels. They brought the alligator to the Lehigh stove and repair shop, where the gator was shortly displayed. The following photo was shown in the New York Daily News, and at that moment, the legend of alligators living in the sewers of New York was truly born. Once more alligators were found in New York over the next few decades, the legend began growing at a rapid rate. One of the main reasons for the legend's growth was due to a book titled The World Beneath the City by Robert Daly. Coming out in 1959, Daly explains the stories of a man named Teddy May, who was a supposed superintendent of sewers. In it, May explains how the legend of alligators and sewers was indeed real, and more than just a few random pets being found. May explained how back in 1935, some sewer workers came to him and explained they saw alligators in the sewers. May thought they were drunk, but decided to take a look for himself. Quote, the beam of his own flashlight had spotlighted alligators whose length on the average was about two feet. Some may have been longer. Avoiding the swift current of the trunk lines under major avenues, the beast had wormed up the smaller pipes under less important neighborhoods, and there Teddy had found them. The colony appeared to have settled contentedly under the very streets of the busiest city in the world. The theory of small pet alligators being flushed down toilets existed at this time, but the book also implied that many alligators were thrown into the sewers by lifting up manhole covers. As shocking as a colony of alligators in the sewers was, it did not last long. 
According to May, many factors led to the demise of these gators. Quote, some succumbed to rat poison. Others were harassed by sewer inspectors into swimming into the trunk mains, where the Niagara-like current washed them out to sea. Some were drowned when blockages filled their secluded pipes with backwash to the very top. And a few were hunted down by inspectors with 22 rifles and pistols. Not as part of the job, but as sport. Possibly the most unusual hunting on Earth. A veritable sewer safari. Ever since the Harlem incident, Teddy May's claims and a few more alligators being found in New York, the myth of alligators living in the sewers has stayed popular in American folklore. With all these alligators being found in New York, an obvious question comes to mind. Where did all these alligators come from? No crocodilians are native to the northeastern part of the United States, so they must have been brought there. The most likely theory is the majority of these alligators were released pets. As early as the late 19th century, it was normal for alligators to be sold as pets. There were three common ways for people back then to attain a pet alligator. The first way was more tourist based. Say if a person from the north was visiting the south and entered a store selling hatchling alligators as pets. The person would then buy the gator and bring it back up north with them. The second way was to have an alligator shipped to you. Much like what was shown in an early episode of Leave it to Beaver, there were many ads in the past saying they'd ship a live alligator to you. The third method was to simply enter a pet store that sold alligators and buy them there. As you can tell, it used to be a lot easier for people to have exotic animals like alligators as pets. No matter how these owners got the reptile, many were not prepared to take care of the large creature it would turn into. Once the hatchlings grew past the 10 inch and cute stage of their life, many of those owners no longer wanted them as pets, so a lot of the owners discarded them by flushing them down a toilet, releasing them in public waterways, or opening a manhole and dropping them into the sewers. This is actually something that commonly happens throughout the entire United States. Two famous cases of this are Reggie and Chance the Snapper. Reggie was an American alligator that lived in Lake Machado of Los Angeles, California from 2005 to 2007. He evaded capture for a long time until the Los Angeles Zoo was finally able to get a hold of him. He is now displayed at the LA Zoo. Chance the Snapper is another American alligator released into Humboldt Park of Chicago, Illinois in 2019. He was finally caught by alligator trapper Frank Robb and now lives in the St. Augustine Alligator Farm Zoological Park. Bottom line, is it true that many alligators were found in New York sewers or New York in general? Absolutely yes. Beyond the confirmed cases I've previously stated, there have been more crocodilians found in New York in recent years. In 2001, a spectacled caiman was found in Central Park. In 2010, an American alligator was found in Queens. In 2017, two American alligators were found in upstate New York. And in 2023, an American alligator was found in Prospect Park, just to name a few cases. However, the whole urban legend is not 100% true. There has been no actual evidence to suggest a stable colony of alligators ever lived in the sewers of New York, or that these alligators were albino, mutated, or enormous. All these claims either come from anecdotal evidence or hearsay. Bottom line, as much as this legend is grounded in some reality, you most likely won't be seeing an alligator anytime soon in the Big Apple. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy my book, What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, their regenerating tales, alligators and sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book looks at a variety of subjects many people, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and I desperately wanted to dispel the myths that have persisted so long. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.